Welcome to Great Day at 9A. I am Scott Haney. And I'm Nicole Nalepa. Nice to see you. <laughs> uh, you had a rough night last I, night. I'm actually surprised that I'm sitting here. Yeah, right you know, you should do a, um, a mommy uh, mommy pod on, on night terrace. A mom pod. I, I'm actually going to be working on that. Yeah, because yeah, I, have a uh, I know a lot of, I, I, I've even heard of them. You know, I don't have ch yeah. children, but I know kids go through like a phase where they do have these yep. night terrors. It and peaks at terrible. three to four years old. So for those uh, who are wondering, what's what night terrors? George, unfortunately, had a night terror last night night and then it woke Emmy up and then the kids are just up for the rest of the night. Yeah, so. it was like middle of the day. Yeah, yeah, middle pretty of the much. Day, yeah. It the... was 1230 that I last saw the, well, when I woke up and I never went back to sleep. But it's okay. You know what? The coffee mug is full. It's full with French <laughs> vanilla and I can smell it. <laughs> yes, it is. All right. Well, let's uh, check the weather because we have some serious news to talk about. We are in alert mode. Unfortunately, uh, you can see here, I'm just going to kind of widen out the shot here. You'll notice, Nicole, I mean, it's it's there. Yeah, I mean, that looks pretty big. Yeah, it's pretty pretty intense. And waves of uh, shower and thunderstorm activity are going to be moving through the state. This is uh, from about noontime on. It is going to take a little while for it to get here. So just keep that in mind. Now, our Doppler right now is scanning the state dry. Good morning, everybody. It's time to uh, get out there and run your errands before some of these storms do roll in. Scattered thunderstorms. Some could be strong to severe. And again, the greatest threats are going to be damaging wind and hail and torrential rain embedded in some of these thunderstorms and, of course, lightning. Now, when thunder roars, you need to head indoors. When lightning strikes, get inside. Get off your bikes. G exactly. That's very good <laughs> because uh, you don't want to be caught outside. I know there are a lot of graduations. I know there are a lot of plans outside today. Yeah. Just make sure you have a safe haven to get to in the event some of these storms do roll through. Let's track a few with early one and future cast. We have an hour by hour depiction. You'll see the storms rolling through anytime after two. This is 5 p.m. And then they're gone by 6, 7 o'clock as we lose the daytime heating. These storms will fade away. But in the meantime, the rest of today, check out the thunderstorm icons at 3 p.m. Check out the thunderstorm icons at 7 p.m. So it's going to be with us. Temperatures today will top out in the upper 70s in inland Connecticut and mid-70s for the shoreline. And I'll have your three-day forecast coming up. More thunderstorms expected for Friday. And I'll talk more about that coming up a little bit later on in the show. Well, thank you for all that information. You are so Very welcome. Very helpful. I I'm a plethora of weather knowledge. You are. <laughs> <laughs> Hartford Public Schools are hiring help to hire help uh, to get more staff. Yeah, we were telling you about this uh, earlier this week and last week, but now it's official. The school board decided to approve that big contract with a company called ESS. And this company, as we were saying, specializes in filling vacancies for paras and substitute teachers, almost like a, like a headhunter. Exactly, kind of, right? like they hired a headhunter yep. to get, get more uh, recruits in here. Mm -hmm. And right now, Hartford has more than 80 open positions. So the board voted to approve two and a half million dollars to help with seven hundred and fifty thousand dollars going towards this ESS contract. The rest is served uh, will serve for salaries. And some parents and teachers that we spoke with told us that they actually think the money would be better used elsewhere, and that the district should be able to recruit staff without outside help. Well, apparently they haven't been able to. I was just going to say outside help, uh, and that's why they're going to this extreme. And you know, I'm sure that they right. would want to save that money and spend it elsewhere, but. I'm Unfortunately, it looks like it's come to this, so let's give this a try. Right, 80 open positions. That's going to start impacting your students, I would think, at a certain point. Exactly. Right? That's a lot. I know. And you know, it's so easy when you see and you hear a big price tag, like two and a half million dollars. Of right. course, you you just think of like where where that money could go. Right. But exactly. We got to start with the students gotta first, start with the right? Students like first. teaching them in the classroom. I'm completely with you. Also, in our top headlines this morning, former President Trump is vowing to appoint a special prosecutor to go after President Joe. Biden. Biden and his family if he wins the 2024 presidential election. It was part of his campaign rally speech after being the first U.S. leader to be booked and arraigned on federal charges. Now, before the court appearance, Trump surrendered to authorities, was swabbed for DNA and fingerprinted, but he did not have to take a mugshot and was allowed to keep his passport. The 45th president pleaded not guilty to 37 charges that he illegally kept classified documents and then tried to hide them from investigators. Uh, I'm sure he raised a ton of money yesterday mm. because the well the supporters and the demonstrators were out. Mm -hmm. I understand. Yeah, you saw both sides. There. One person was arrested. Is the I think it was outside of Bedminster where they jumped in front of the motorcade. Mm -hmm. He was dressed oh, yes. in a. Um, in a red and black and white outfit, you know, like a jail mm -hmm. prison stripes. Thank you, yeah. Jamie. Um, and, you know, I think that they were arrested. So the protesters, mm -hmm. you know, but they're out there, pros and cons for yeah. president. It's heated on both sides for sure. So it'll be interesting to see 
what's going to happen. Absolutely. You know, and you just take it day by day. All right. And if the weather cooperates. This is so cool. I, I love know, this. Local golfers will find out today and tomorrow if they have the chance to make it to the Travelers Championship field. Yeah, two pre-qualifier rounds are being held at Ellington Ridge Country Club. Let's hope the weather cooperates. More than 250 golfers are expected to try out. Then the top scorers today and tomorrow will move on to a qualifying tournament next Monday. Only the top four golfers will make it into the field. So this is two four out of 250. This is the eighth year in a row the pre-qualifier has been held in Ellington. Have you ever played at this course? I don't know if I've ever played at Ellington okay. Ridge. Yeah, I, you know what? I take that back. I think I have played there. Okay. I know I played in South Windsor, but I'm not quite sure if I've ever played in Ellington. It wasn't for pre-qualifying for the Travelers. No, though. I okay. certainly would not be pre- <laughs> No, I would be pre-qualifying if I could hit a house. <laughs> With I a know. golf ball. I love whenever you say you do play at the TPC. Yeah, like, I didn't hit a house, Nicole. I, I, I didn't hit a house on 12 and 13. <laughs> I know that course like inside and out, and I know where the houses are, and I know where all my balls are. There you go. They're inside the people's so. houses. <laughs> there you go. Um, what am I looking forward to the most of Travelers? Uh, the women's luncheon. You know who's speaking? No. Katie Couric. You're kidding. Yeah, it's sold out. Yeah. Oh. That's going to be really exciting. And they actually brought Women's Day back to the TPC. If you remember, it was at uh, in Hartford. Uh, for a little while there, so that's really exciting. You're, are you, you going? Yeah. Yes. I used to hand her her scripts when she was on the evening news and I interned there, so it'll be fun to like see her in Cromwell. That is so know? exciting. It's been a little while since Katie and I hung out. Wow. <laughs> That's you, so cool. What are you looking forward to the most? Uh, just the, the golfers in the field and the excitement that it builds and all the money that goes to charity. Yeah. And, you know, oh, it's I just can't. millions of dollars going to charities all yeah. across the state, and it's just wonderful. And Nathan Groob does such a great job with the course. He's just a terrific He's human being. He's an amazing being. guy, yeah. Amazing guy, and everybody who works there is terrific. So we just want to wish them good luck, and let's hope the weather cooperates. Yes. So you better be giving some good I'm weather reports try. next I'm week. I'm going to try. <laughs> this story is in the show today specifically for Nicole. Who, me? Yes, you. Does it have to do with the Beatles? Did you know that we will get one final Beatles song? Oh, yeah. I, I know, you're, exi so you're ex so excited I'm about so this. I'm so excited over this because when the um, Beatles did their anthology, if you remember back in the 90s, uh, well, I'll get to the story first and then remember that, the anthology. Paul McCartney says that this new Beatles song is all thanks to artificial intelligence. Huh. McCartney, one of the two surviving original members of the Beatles, says that the song comes from a demo that he and John worked on decades ago. John Lennon, that is, for those you, of you who don't know, but I hope you do. Producers used artificial intelligence to mix the new song song that is using Lennon's voice and the legendary guitarist and singer admits that it's quote kind of scary Paul's like it's kind of creepy but you know what we'll do it he also says that there's a good side to it um, and of course a bad side to AI so uh, well yes very curious about what Ringo thinks of all this yeah that's really cool. you know but back when they did the anthology in the 90s um, they brought back some old recordings of John's voice and George Paul and Ringo for the first time got together and they played to John's track and created the songs real love and free as a bird I didn't really I, I had no idea about yep. that so those were just like in in the conception you know actually uh, in the um, the documentary get back you can hear the real love song starting to be thrown around a little bit that's incredible do you think today that they would get back together, all four of them, if they were all alive? Yeah. I do, I do too. Yeah. I do, oh, I have goosebumps. Yeah, I do too. I think actually after 9-11, I think that would have been like the culminating point right. for them to like, you know, let's do this for everyone. Remember when they did that big concert yeah, after 9-11? Yeah. I really think that by then that would have, if there wasn't something that, that happened before, good or bad, they would have definitely... Um, gotten back together. Well, so. we'll, we'll wait and see what happens. Maybe Ringo and uh, Paul will get together. Yeah, maybe. They're they're still great buds. They're great yeah, they lads. Are. They're great.